Who is this 14-year-old boy? And what could he have possibly done at such a young age to be receiving an International Human Rights Award? His name is Craig Kielberger, and his story is a stirring example of what one person can do to fight unfairness and injustice. Over the past year, I've had the opportunity to travel through five countries in South Asia, and I've met many children who are suffering. Children who are living on the streets of some of the world's largest cities. I've met children sold as bonded laborers, working 12 to 16 hours a day in the carpet industry. These children have no vote, no voice, and no political clout. Many of them are subjected to some of the most inhumane forms of exploitation. And today I am here to speak for these children. Craig's story began two years earlier when he read a newspaper article about a Pakistani boy named Iqbal Masi. Iqbal had been sold into slavery in the carpet industry at age four to pay off his family's $12 debt. When he was finally freed six years later, he began speaking out against the abuses of child labor. At the age of 12, he was murdered. I was also 12 years old at that point, and I had never heard about child labor. I did not know where Pakistan was on the world map, and I certainly knew nothing about the world in which millions of children my age work long hours in conditions approaching slavery each day. And my question is, are all children created equal? And if child labor is wrong for a white, middle-class child in North America, then why is it any different for a girl in Thailand or a boy in Brazil? My friends and I have started an organization called Free the Children a youth group mainly made up of young people between 10 and 16 years of age. And the purpose of our group is not only to free children from exploitation and abuse, but also to free children from the idea that they are powerless and that they have no role to play in today's society. Free the children, how may I help you? Craig Kielberger speaking. Using Craig's house as its headquarters, Free the Children set out with the goal of eradicating the exploitation and abuse of children throughout the world. Oh yeah, we have many projects. For example, today we're just um, working with our petition we started. Free the Children sent this 10,000 name petition to world leaders urging them to end unfair child labor practices. And they use every opportunity to speak out against child labor at schools, churches, service groups, anywhere people will listen. We have a couple of uh, special guests coming in today to talk to you about a new organization that they've organized. We've come to talk to you about a problem that we find very serious, and it is child labor. Factory owners just love to hire children because they don't have to pay them as much. They're easily intimidated, won't fight or talk back, and they cannot form trade unions. As their activities increased, so did their reputation. And then, just a few months after their conception, the Ontario Federation of Labour invited Craig to speak to the 2,000 delegates at its convention in Toronto. Children in dangerous glass factories, children in the sugarcane fields, children physically and verbally abused, children making the many products which we import into Canada and use every day without considering their source. Who will help the children if we don't? Thank you very much. Anyway, I just wanted to let you know that the board has just voted and will offer, will donate $5,000 to your cause. Right off. And by way of that, we are now challenging everybody out there to help Craig. You said you needed $10,000? Uh, yes, that's what we're hoping to raise for a fund. Okay, well, I think we can do better than that. Okay? We would like to donate $5,000 to you. We'd like to donate $1,000. Yeah, we will match the $5,000. Sure. $5,000. When the final tally was in, 
Craig had raised $150,000 to be used for projects that would directly help exploited working children of the developing world. Giving speeches was one thing, but traveling to Asia was quite another. So how does a 12-year-old convince his parents to let him travel halfway around the world to investigate the abuses of child labor? For Craig, the key was Alam, a trusted friend of the family with relatives in Bangladesh. Alam agreed to serve as Craig's guide and guardian. He would also videotape the trip. We're heading in to go see a domestic servant now. In India, Craig found this young girl working 11 hours a day, pulling apart used hospital syringes for recycling. She used to go to school, but stopped because of the poverty in her family. It's quite dangerous if you prick yourself with the spread of so many diseases lately. I was literally in shock. She was wearing no shoes and no gloves. And the needle tips were uncovered. It, she just considers it life. We had to leave before we could get out all of her questions because the person, our guide with us, says that if her boss sees us talking to us, he might hit her as he has done before. Yeah. In Pakistan, Craig visited a brick kiln where poor families had borrowed small amounts of money from the kiln owner and now their children work as bonded laborers to pay off the debt. These children make bricks 12 hours a day, seven days a week, and never leave the kiln. The cost of their food and board is deducted from their tiny wages, so most of these children will work here their entire lives and never get out of debt. He does not know what a school is no. at all. Has he ever been off the brick kiln? No, he has never been outside. He's never been outside no, his complex. When we see a child suffering, you should feel deep down in your stomach a feeling that begins to build. And once that happens, once our eyes are opened, that's when we're truly responsible to take action. Craig's trip to Asia and the media attention it got triggered a bombshell of activity. Free the Children chapters sprung up everywhere as thousands of kids were drawn into this international network of children helping children. And their impact is enormous. They send badly needed school supplies and health kits to children who are too poor to buy them. Through garage sales and car washes, they raise money for teacher salaries in schools that are otherwise too poor to hire them. And that $150,000 Craig got from the Ontario Federation of Labor helped build this rehabilitation and education center for children freed from labor in India. People will sometimes look at me and say, well, you know, you're only 13 years old. And while 13-year-olds, they don't do these type of things. As young people, we are capable of doing more than simply watching TV, playing video games, hanging around malls. You know, don't get me wrong, I actually do do these things, and I love doing them, too. You know what, there's so much more on top of this that young people can do. You know, some of you may say, well, I can't do great things. Well, Mother Teresa once said that we could do no great things. We could only do small things with great love. And if everyone around the world were willing to open their eyes and open their hearts, then there would be no more poverty, there would be no more injustice, and there would be no more abuse. And that is the challenge which we all must face. Through your words and through your actions, set these children free. Thank you.